this morning, I promise you that I would like to share with you some things that I've learned about the God's way. And tonight, we'll be partial to fulfilling that promise.
us learn to pray to God how the scriptures have taught us to pray. But on the model prayer, the outline prayer, uh, illustrations of prayer that God expected, and there are multitudes, multitudes. I can I can read a chapter four for four of just inspiration to people who the scriptures were praying to God respect them and their respect to the prayer makers. It just says that. He wanted to pray from his models and his illustrations and verses that tell us just directly that for us to do I want to have tips on the high spots that I've learned to be slightly and share them with you and how intentionally it's not going to be able to take into it. And this is not an exhausting uh, discussion of these things at all. I guess the point is the thought is that you can get to the point without being able to pray for you. So the lesson started for our prayer points and study. What I get to know is when they hear it, they hear it, they hear it, they hear it. We've recorded this prayer for the day to show you a little bit of the depth of prayer that is often the thing that is on the news today. So it's all about the fear of prayer to just pray. We confess that it moves and exercises the language of our lips and feelings of our hearts and not just the word. That we have frequently taken care of the sleep on our tongues and we can never put it to love without reverence and humility. We often desire things that would fit to us, but we have appreciated that some of our chief mercies, that we are unfit to choose for ourselves, for it is not good to pray for ourselves. May your spirit help our infirmities, for we know not what to pray for to God. Let it produce in those high desires by which we may answer all things. Then we shall be that you will hear us. May we never be able to be weary to all the blessings. Always refer them to your Father's goodness, for you know what we need that we ask. May we never think we prosper because our souls are prospering, or that we are rich, less rich to thee. May we first seek your kingdom and righteousness, and we value the revelation to eternity. Your spiritual welfare be our chief concern. May we be more afflicted to spies and have the blessing rather than be successful. For now, the poor and the heart of the rich will be honored by the old man. May we see what happens in your favor, the likeness, the presence, and the assurance. The death of the Lord, the life of the Lord, to that day, you may not say it looks like a good day, you may not say it looks like a good day, you may say, I want to. There was something written here two years ago, so the life of the Lord is a little bit higher. Each of our goals to pray in God's perspective and not our own. There is never a call it back, open your mouth, and say the first thing that comes to your mind. Prayer is conversation between ourselves and God. It is a two, it's two way sense that, first of all, we are talking to God. The scripture says in Romans chapter 8, it is a two way. Secondly, because the Holy Spirit is affecting us within us. To grow things within us, a prayer language that God hears that is according to His will. That is that we want to say the Holy Spirit to impart what to say, and in another sense, there's a very real groaning that we will hear or say. It has nothing to do with the tongues or anything like that, but it is a language that God, the Holy Spirit, is bringing from our hearts to God's ears. He's always praying God's will. It occurred to us in talking in class that, that uh, we could often be praying for one thing, and because we want the will of God, the Holy Spirit is praying the direct opposite for us. We are praying, Lord, give us that whatever. Please give us that job that the Holy Spirit made because we desire God's will. We would like to give him. And at that very moment, be glowing for us. Do not give him that job, God. That's it. Never think that devilish thought, the devilish thought that prayer helps us because we're talking out our problems. We're unworthy of our heart. Prayer is not therapeutic activity, releasing stress. That is the devil that would ever insist that on you. It's the devil that would ever have you believe that your prayer is good for you because just like you would be in a group session talking out your problems, that is not prayer. Prayer is a two. Person conversation. 
where the hopeless one you, the dependent one you, the worthless one you, are bringing eternal petitions before the infinite God and to do more than you can ever ask or think about it. That is the value of prayer, just petitioning the real God. Casting all your care on your knees, not even the never means you got things off the chest.
to the one that, that of his own free will would never give up for you. He is, he is, he is not, he is out, he is set apart. You are saying, I am not, you are starting off by acknowledging that you are dependent and you are coming slowly to him. In the right respect, I cannot stand here and pray to the others who pray here or whatever, as if God is the, the, the man upstairs. He got what he did. Man, I cannot stand in peace. It's like, you are not like me, God. You are set apart. You are holy. I am not here. The absence of evil, the presence of all that is good. You are hollow. You come into the right prayer as you begin your prayer of adoration. There is a submission that the must be your prayer. Number two, the Bible says, Come, thy will be done. You are saying, Thy kingdom come, not my kingdom come. Not me. Okay, your kingdom come, your will be done. This is the immediate submission to love. One of the most important points of our prayer life must be dependence. It must be humility. It must become God. We never be God of truth. We never demand anything of God. We come as terrible beggars before his throne. This is submitting all the details of your life to his big agenda. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. We'll talk about this in a moment. This is the greatest element missing from our prayer of respecting God's will. How about you? Everybody say amen. Go on, I'm positive. Amen. Some of them are off track. Get on track. There is a sense when we say God's will to be willing to see what that means. When I say God's will, I'm thinking about Amy and my family. That's where that will come from. So yeah, that's what I'm thinking of when I say God's will. That's not fully really respected by the God. It is His will. It is His big agenda. It is what He is doing, not what, what I am doing in relationship to Him. And I'm praying, Thy will be done. God's big agenda. God's big will. His big agenda of His kingdom, of what He's performing. Lifting up Christ. Preparing people for the kingdom. Getting things ready for the rapture. Uh, uh, making his name big on the earth, saving people at the last moment from hell. This is his big agenda. When I did my prayer, I was just myself away from all the stuff that I want, all the stuff that is happening in my job and my family, and all the stuff, 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 stuff. I must get my mind to his agenda. I must come to him with myself of the small things of my life. Not that he doesn't care about me. That when I adjust myself to his agenda, many of those things to be themselves. Okay? This is so important. We must get the get the uh, in picture. Only a big view of God's work of building his kingdom. Souls, spiritual growth of believers, his church, his coming rapture. These are the things that God is, is worried about. And when we pray even about all these little things that we do with our life, we need to look at them. In relationship to the filter of this big kingdom work. How does your job and the decisions that you're going to make affect the fact that Jesus Christ is the exalted? How does the fact that you have a child that you cannot control, how does that affect the fact that God needs to be made big on this earth? How does the fact that you have a neighbor that is terrible affect the fact that souls need to be brought out of the pit of hell? Okay, I must adjust my prayers. So his will of what he is doing is not about me. You can be You can pray for your job. How that job relates to God's will of life. You can be spiritual. Will it help uh, your family's lives? Will it help Jesus in the church? Will it be your job help you to be more of a blessing? Stop for 
ourselves. It's like a two-year-old kid's Holy Spirit getting caught in the middle of the great crisis because he doesn't have the tools to do it. But it forgives his own people that they should be forgiven. They should be comforted and guided to pray for those who are dead. They should be taken care of. And we have to submit it. We pray, first of all, that we know this place is a stair to the bread. Notice that even in this launch of clusters of locusts, a desire for what we need, not our luxury that we think we want. There's no problem with God's child desiring good things from the giver of good gifts, but it must always be practiced with the condition that I have your will given to me. Now, we're going to stop here and we're going to stop here and say this. All right? How will what you want help this kingdom? How will what you want help evangelize the things that are important to God? I think this is something that we often miss in our prayer. And it's not even just the right to it. And in fact, we have to put a negative in the prayer. Lord, if this will not help your kingdom agenda in any way, do not give it to me. I don't want it if it's not important to you. If you do not want to give it to me, because it will help me in some way. And I believe there's many prayers that I have prayed that that I knew that I should not receive from the Lord because it would lead to pride, or would lead to his using something that would not bring him glory. Okay, so we've got to just temper or filter our prayers through this idea. What he wants, and he knows that we need to make prayer. We are dependent upon his kingdom. His kingdom has a song of prayer. It's 
empty. So let me just put it into common thought. Brainless prayer. Empty prayer. The Lord does not want you to pray traditional phrases without your brain. They simply sound good. He wants you really to be next to me. What does that mean? To be in the scripture. Why does it be so often to start each prayer with? Well, Thank you. 
David has set mind to be the praise of the people who have to be the way the kings of the earth stood up because they were set up to rule as the death together against the Lord, against his Christ, and the truth. And he's a holy child, Jesus, who is the point of appearance, which is finally the Gentiles, the people of Israel, were gathered uh, together for to whatsoever thy kids and kids to turn before you turn to now, Lord, and all their threatenings, and grant unto thy servants that they may escape the persecution. Is that what's going to It says, Lord, we call them threatenings, and to thy servants, that with all boldness they may speak thy Stretching forth by the end of the year, and signs of wonders to the end of the year. So, if you have every thought of this church, it's a persecution of the dragons, imprisonment of their leaders. When they face the prison, they go back and forth and tell terrible things that they've done to them. Persecution of the Jews, and all of their involved in threatening and persecuting and committing and wicked and all the stuff that they did. Church publicly opens their mouth and begins praying. Well, I guess there's one guy who left. Begins praying. And the content of his prayer is in verse number 29. And he says, What he prays for is granted by servants that with all boldness they may speak on the Lord. What is the difference between when they pray and when they pray? Does that sound like a little bit of a difference between? Modern church would have prayed for their safety, their deliverance, that they would not be arrested, that they would not be sent away from the jail, that their bodies would go quickly. That's what we want to pray for. It's not the truth. What's the difference when it's so focused on physical and fleshly things and other things, but it's the spirit of God and the spirit of things? They did not pray for the physical people or the deliverance of any of these things. What they pray for is that when they are persecuted, that these apostles would open their mouth and preach with boldness. That's God in this thing. So the next thing the apostles thought, I'm going to get through it because I'm going to get through it. And I want you to sit here from the perspective of the way that we should pray for physical things and for heavenly things and for crisis situations. We are so focused on the physical that we forget that there are spiritual reasons why these things are happening, even medical, even medical things, things like the sicknesses. This is clearly seen on our prayer list and in the major content of our prayer meetings on Wednesday night. So this bloody commentary on really sick people that we have made it so major when it comes to the language of the American prayer. We are prepared to what God is doing to the world. We are ready to pray for the for the sick. Problems. What do I mean? We always pray, God, heal that sick person. But if it's God's will, and it is God's will, that they be sick. First, we pray. We have a very full view of what's going on and what God's doing in that sickness. Before we then feed them, very little. We have only a get better mentality. It's not even a biblical mentality. about God's 